You're listening to Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. Well, folks, it's time for another round of Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall and a third round of All About Q. And when I say All About Q, of course, I'm talking about Q Anon. And I am joined by my good buddy, Dave Hayes, who is an extraordinary Q decoder and has been working on this, I mean, since it started or as soon as it was known to him, really. I, I, and I, I'm just amazed by the way that Dave has been able to follow Q this whole year. And uh, now that we are on the other side of these midterms, we had uh, planned actually for this interview months before knowing that it would be an interesting show. Well, it's going to be extremely interesting because, well, like many of you out there listening, I have a lot of questions. But Dave tells me he has a lot of answers. So, Dave, welcome back to Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. Thank you, Dan. It is always a pleasure to talk to you, uh, regardless of what we're talking about, whether it's Q or emotional healing or whatever it is, man. It's always awesome hanging out with you. Looking forward well, to it. There, there's a few people that feel like they need emotional healing after these midterms. Yep. Uh, because <laughs> literally don't know what happened. Yep. Uh, I think other people, okay, uh, especially those that have been kind of offended by some of the rhetoric that's come from the Trump camp around uh, racial uh, uh, issues, um, were somewhat pleased. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, divided allegiances and opinions um, at this point in our landscape of politics in America. And, you know, uh, me personally, and, and I know you as well, we're, we're kingdom people. We look at the kingdom of God first. But I'll tell you, this whole Q phenomena has really been fascinating to me because it's answered a lot of questions and left me with a lot of questions. And, and I, I want to get started here because, all right, um, you know, a lot of people that have looked into Q have seen some of the answers that he's given, things that have been revealed, have said, wow, I've been floored, and, and, and then followed for a while, and then been, I don't know, kind of confused, uh, maybe uh, disoriented, not knowing where to place everything, because there have been things, even in our first podcast, we talked about this, where Q has been spot on, and other things where it hasn't been quite spot. And after this midterm, I just want to ask the first question. Do you fully still trust Q? Why or why not? Absolutely. I do. Okay. Why or why not? <laughs> why or why not? <laughs> All right. The first thing that you need to understand about Q is that Q does not tell us the news and Q does not necessarily always predict the news, although sometimes Q has predicted the news correctly. And it's not because Q is a psychic, right? It's because Q has insider information. How did Q know that the Saudi princes were going to be arrested before it happened? How did Q know that the Saudi princes were going to be beaten by uh, Eric Prince's Blackwater um, missionary or uh, <laughs> mercenaries uh, weeks before it was disclosed by the news. How did Q know about uh, Huber, John Huber, being tapped by Jeff Sessions to prosecute the FBI and DOJ corruption? Uh, four months before it was publicly announced, right? So if you look back historically, you can look at some things that Q talked about and see that Q correctly somehow knew about things that were not public knowledge that were no one was reporting on. And so, first of all, 
there's the issue of how do you explain Q's ability to know this stuff, the things that Q has gotten right, okay? If Q is a LARP, if Q is a phony, then how did Q get this information before anyone else got it? So that's the first question you need to ask. Now, the second issue is a bit more murky. People say, oh, Q said this was gonna happen. Q predicted this and it didn't come to pass. That means Q is a phony. Okay, well, you can, you can go down that road if you want to, that's fine. If that's the conclusion you want to draw, that's okay, that's fine. Um, you're not taking in all the information though. That's the problem. Mm. The information you need to have includes the data points that Q is not talking to a singular audience. Like if I'm Sean Hannity and I'm doing a broadcast on the news, I'm really only talking to one audience. I'm talking to the camera, I'm reporting the news, I'm giving my opinions, right? Uh, how he sees it, his view, Sean Hannity is, <clears throat> is trying to give the world his understanding of the current events and news as he sees it, right? What you see is what you get with people like Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, uh, Mark Levin, right? They're not speaking to multiple audiences necessarily. There's, they're generally speaking to conservative audiences. They know their audience, they know what their audience wants to hear, and they de deliver a singular message to one audience, okay? Q is not delivering a singular message to one audience. Q is delivering multiple messages to multiple audiences with different agendas. Q is talking to patriots. Q is talking to Trump supporters. Q is talking to Trump haters. Q is talking to CIA operatives. Q is talking to people who work in the FBI and to people who work overseas. Uh, Q is talking to Theresa May and Emmanuel Macron and Vladimir Putin. Okay. If you are talking to people with that wide a variety of experiences and agendas, then you have to be very careful about what you say because you're talking to your enemies as well as your allies. Much of what Q has given us during his drops is disinformation it is wrong news, it is fake information intended to throw off his enemies, the enemies of the president, get them off balance, get them to make moves, make decisions and do things that allows Trump and his people to have an advantage. All right? So, some wow. of the things- Wow, some of the <laughs> that's things, a big statement. That's, that's the problem. If you don't understand the fact that that there are all kinds of people observing Q's boards and making plans based on what Q says, you're going to be totally messed up. That's the first, the first week of Q's post last October, first week of November, was all about Hillary and Huma Abedin and John Podesta getting arrested. All right? That was the first clue that Q was providing disinformation. Q was telling us that political leaders in the United States were gonna be indicted and arrested to get people's attention on protecting deep state actors in the US. And the deep state, the CIA and those people were focusing on Podesta and Hillary and Huma Abedin and protecting them. That week, the Saudi princes got arrested. It was a diversion. It was, now people would look at those predictions about Hillary and Huma Abedin and John Podesta being arrested and say, see, Q predicted things that didn't come to, come to pass, Q is fake. Well, okay, that's fine. You can take that if you want. You, you can, you're welcome to take that attitude if you want. The, the reality is the same week Q was telling us about Podesta's, uh, Podesta and Huma Abedin and Hillary being arrested, Q was also dropping crumbs about the Saudi princes. And you had to be paying attention. And the, the hint about the Saudi arrest coming was very subtle and it was a day before it happened. The, the, the disinformation about Hillary and Huma and Podesta was an entire week long. 
It was a week-long campaign of disinformation to distract people's attention away from what was really happening. So the the first thing you have to understand is a lot of the information that Q gives us is for disinformation. It's intentionally wrong information to distract and to confuse the enemies of the president. And go ahead. No, I, I mean, this is, this is really big, right? So, so now, now we're at a place where, um, you, well, you're telling me, Q is intentionally dropping this information because he's talking to his enemies. Right. So how does that change the way you follow Q and you uh, observe what he is dropping and posting? Because it's one thing if you look at Q and you say, he is giving us reveal after reveal on what is to come, what to expect. But if we change it and say, wait a minute, he is giving disinformation so that he could throw off the enemies of Trump or you know, throw the deep state off itself. How are we supposed to view Q now? Okay. This is how I view Q. Q gives us information, clues and hints, and suggestions, and things to look up, things things to research. But Q never tells us, very seldom tells us what conclusions to draw about the drops that he's giving us. Mm. He wants us to draw our own conclusions, do our own research, right? which is why so many people who are following Q come to so many different conclusions and different areas of interest and different uh, areas of focus. And there's a wide variety. There's there's not a whole lot of agreement (laughs) among the Q universe about what Q is doing and what the real message is all about and what the mission is all about. Because Q doesn't come out and tell you in very clear terms, here is what we're all about you have to arrive at your own conclusions. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing that you have to keep in mind if you want to follow Q is Q's Q's messages, if if you're aware that Q is speaking to two different audiences at least, people who support the president, people who are enemies of the president, if you're aware that there are two different messages or two different audiences that are being spoken to, not two different, because Q will speak to the two different audiences through the same message, right? So what, what I have found is um, I have to keep my expectations realistic and I have to always keep in the back of my mind the possibility that what I'm reading could be intended for the CIA <laughs> or somebody in the FBI or DOJ or somebody on the Supreme Court or somebody over in in Europe. I always have to keep in the back of my mind, what has Q said about this previously? What is currently happening? And what do I know about uh, Q's mission overall? Now, here's something that you're gonna wanna ask about and and people wanna know about. Jeff Sessions and Rod Rosenstein. I was Good going one. there. Can't wait. Okay. Early on, <clears throat> early on in Q's mission, Q suggested that there were people inside the FBI and the DOJ who had worked under Bill Clinton and Obama, and they were forced into cooperating, cooperating with those people and corruption at the threat of physical harm to themselves and their family. Okay. Specifically, I think Q was suggesting that Robert Mueller and Rod Rosenstein may have been two people who worked uh, Mueller, FBI, Rosenstein, DOJ as uh, people who maybe were unwitting accomplices to all that corruption and that Trump may have recruited them to work with him to help put away the deep state as kind of a little revenge for them because they were forced into doing this stuff. Okay. So Q suggested early on 
Rosenstein and Mueller may actually be working with the president. Okay. Now, throughout Q's mission over the next year, we have had conflicting reports from Q. Sometimes Q will suggest Mueller is working against the president. And then a week later, Q suggests that Mueller is working with the president. <laughs> Same with Rosenstein. Sometimes Rosenstein is painted as a white hat. Sometimes he's painted as a black hat. It, it depends how Q is portraying those people based on news cycles and based on what is happening in the White House and the intelligence community. So I have just, people want to put a black hat and a white hat on everybody. Is he a good guy or is he a bad guy? I need to know, who am I dealing with here? And I've been telling people for a long time, you will not know about Rosenstein and Mueller until the end of the story. They've both been painted as gray hats. You really don't know which way to go with them. And that's just the way it is. And so if you understand that what Q has been trying to do is try to basically deceive the deep state into trusting someone they shouldn't trust or into being skeptical of someone that they should trust. It's misdirection, it's game theory, it's 3D chess, whatever you wanna call it. It is anticipating your enemy's motives and moves and baiting them into going in a direction when you, that you want them to go in, right? So the sessions, the, the same thing happened with sessions and people don't really understand this. And I didn't understand it until you and I just started talking and I just got this download from the Holy Spirit, I think, about sessions. Okay? I'm confused. Uh, Be because no, we, it, was the same thing, it was the same thing with sessions. Because we, but, had, we had, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Here's, here's what you need to know. Q will give incorrect information all right, information that's not true, but the information Q gives us, people who are supporting the president, if he gives us wrong information, it's not harmful to us. If he gives the deep state wrong information, it is harmful to them. So if we bite on the story that Mueller is a black hat or Mueller is a white hat or Rosenstein's a black hat or whatever, if we come up with the wrong uh, if we put a wrong colored hat on one of those guys, it's not going to hurt us. It is going to hurt uh, Hillary Clinton. It is going to hurt people in Congress. It'll hurt people in the FBI and DOJ if they trust the wrong person. Okay. It has consequences for them. It doesn't have consequences for us. Okay. So let's talk about sessions. There is a very interesting dynamic that happened with Jeff Sessions after he was appointed to attorney general by Trump. Initially, the deep state did not trust Sessions. They thought, oh my gosh, this guy is trouble. He is gonna lock us all up and we're all gonna be going to Gitmo. Which is why Sessions had a very hard time getting through his Senate confirmation. They called him a racist. They called him every name in the book. They slandered him. And he had a very hard time getting through confirmation. The swamp did not want Jeff Sessions as attorney general. Over the next year, Trump kept tweeting about Sessions, about how he was useless. He wasn't helping him. He shouldn't have recused himself. Sessions is worthless. I never should have hired him, blah, 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 right, for a year. Trump keeps tweeting about Sessions, saying what, how he's just, Sessions is not helping me, right? All the while, Sessions is, is doing some work about cleaning up, cleaning up uh, gang activity, MS-13. Uh, the DOJ has prosecuted way more pedophiles and child sex trafficking people than they ever have it in, in any one-year period prior. Okay, So Sessions is doing some work. He appoints John Huber to... A, an airtight investigation of corruption inside FBI and DOJ and State Department. And that work is ongoing. Trump keeps tweeting about Sessions being useless. Q keeps telling us, trust Sessions. Sessions is a patriot, okay? Uh, Sessions is, even though Trump is tweeting 
that Sessions is not helping him, Q is telling us Sessions is helping us. Okay, that, that is really all we needed to know about Sessions, is that Sessions was in fact working with the president and getting things done that needed to be done. Now, people thought Q's um, admonition to trust Sessions, they thought, oh, Sessions is gonna be around forever. Sessions will be the one to drop the hammer. Sessions is gonna be the one to prosecute everybody. Well, Q never said that. <laughs> Q never said Sessions is gonna be around forever and Sessions is gonna be the one to unseal all the indictments. He never said that. Q simply said, trust Sessions. Trust Chris Ray, trust Pompeo, trust uh, Horowitz. Okay, we've got trust different people from Q. All right, Q was, and Q told us, Trey Gowdy is a patriot. A lot of people weren't sure about Trey Gowdy and Q said, Trey is a patriot, All right? And recently Q dropped a reminder that it could be Trey who ends up being uh, the long-term appointment attorney general. We don't know yet, but that's a possibility. Anyway, people, I think, me included, wrongly came to the impression that Sessions is gonna be around forever. Even the deep state got the impression that Sessions might be around for a long time. Although, it's interesting because people inside the Beltway, inside DC, they kind of knew Sessions was on his way out. Trey Gowdy said, after uh, Sessions resigned, he said, you know, Sessions was a dead man walking. Everyone knew that he was, his time was limited. He was gonna be going. Trey's like, I didn't expect it to happen the day after the election, but we all knew that he was on his way out. So. One thing that's important to understand is why Sessions had to go. Sessions could never be the one to pull the trigger on the deep state. He could never be the one to lock up corrupt members of Congress because he had recused himself from the Russia investigation because he was part of the Trump campaign. The fact that he recused himself from the Russia investigation made it practically impossible for him to be the one to pull the trigger. If he would have been the one who unsealed all these indictments, the deep state and Trump's opponents would have cried foul. Mm. There's no way Sessions could have been the one to do that. So, so Sessions was kind of a placeholder. Okay. Okay. Until the elections. Nothing could be done prior to the elections because if Trump would have fired Rosenstein or fired Sessions, it would have fired up his opponents and they would have cried foul. They would have cried obstruction of justice. And that, that just couldn't happen for optical purposes. Sessions and Rosenstein had to stay in the DOJ until after the midterms. I think it's highly significant that Sessions resigned the day after the election and Trump appointed Whitaker as his successor. Now, if you go back to a Q drop on November 3rd, which is three days before the election, Q posted about a stealth bomber. Q said, how do you remove an installed uh, obstruction, which was Mueller? How do you go around an, obst an installed obstruction? Use a stealth bomber. Now, I had kind of wrongly assumed he was talking about Sessions and John Huber. Well, in fact, he wasn't. <laughs> because if you go back to that drop on November 3rd, and I'm going there right now, okay. there is uh, a, a hint that Whitaker is coming. This is before the midterm elections. So Q has all the stuff about Mueller, keep your eye on the ball, midterms and memes. There's a space with brackets. Um, remember, Trump has already ordered the D-class. Rosenstein pushed back hard. Inspector General asked to review to determine the sense of info, so on, so on. Goes on, talks about Mueller, the reasons why the deep state installed Mueller and how he was going to hamstring Trump for his first two years. Then at the bottom it says, how do you navigate around an installed corrupt FBI DOJ? Use a stealth bomber. Below that, there is a series of dashes, spaces, and there's eight of them. 
Whitaker's last name has eight letters. I think he was telling us Whitaker was coming before the, the midterms. And mm -hmm. look, Whitaker was Sessions' uh, chief of staff. He is a hardcore Trump supporter. He is fearless. He, he, I, I think Whitaker is essentially going to be in the role of Anthony Scaramucci. When Mooch was t took over as chief of staff uh, for Trump for, for like a week, he fired a bunch of people. People left, they got out. And there was a bunch of leaking, and there were a lot of uh, bad people in the White House, Rents Priebus, and a few other people who needed to go. Trump brought in Scaramucci. Scaramucci was the ax man. He got rid of a bunch of people. And then Scaramucci left, and the General Kelly came in. And General Kelly has been chief of staff since then. I think Whitaker is going to have a similar role. Whitaker is the executioner. Uh, Whitaker is the guy who will come in. He'll unseal the indictments. He will finish cleaning up the mess in the FBI and DOJ. Uh, he is not a full-term, full-time replacement. He's a temp. And he has no baggage. He can come in, do whatever he wants. He was not involved in uh, Trump's campaign, so he doesn't have to recuse himself. He's got no baggage. <clears throat> he's, he's a hired gun. Uh, he is Wyatt Earp. He can come in, clean up the corruption, and leave and Trump can appoint whoever he wants after that. So now go ahead. Okay. Uh, that make, okay. Okay. I'm just going to say this. The point that you make about sessions having his hands tied for being the guy that unseals the indictments makes sense. I'm like, okay, I get that. But why did Trump appoint Whitaker the way he did? Because I'm scratching my head. I'm like, but why would, no, why would you do it like that though? Because now they are crying foul. Anyway, it's I, too I, late. I don't know if you have an answer for that. It's too late. It's, <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> they can cry foul all they want. They, they had been, everyone in Congress who hates Trump has been screaming that Whitaker has to recuse himself because they want Rod Rosenstein in charge of the Mueller investigation because they trust Rosenstein. Okay. But the problem that they know, they feel if they have Rosenstein in control of the Mueller investigation, they're safe. They've always felt that way. I think this is just me. Okay. I think the plan from the beginning, a long time ago, was to allow Sessions to recuse himself and take him off of oversight of the Mueller investigation because that's what the swamp wanted. They bring in someone like Rosenstein who can oversee the Mueller investigation and the swamp will trust Rosenstein and trust Mueller, right? They're happy. They think everything is going great. They think everything's groovy, no problem, everything's good, right? Trump and Sessions don't appoint a second special counsel. They decide to hire, appoint, or assign John Huber to do the work of a special counsel, but he's in a U.S. attorney's office. He is not in D.C. He can impanel grand juries anywhere in the country that he wants. He can, his, his investigation has been completely leak free. Nothing has ever leaked out of his investigation. Unlike Mueller's investigation, which has leaks every week, nothing has leaked out of Huber's investigation. I think the plan from the beginning was to put Sessions in as a placeholder to placate the deep state, allow Rosenstein and Mueller to do their thing, keep the deep state happy. And as soon as the midterm elections were over, the executioner shows up and he's got his uh, guillotine and he's going to start chopping off heads. And now the deep state is freaking out because they realize, holy hell, we got a guy now as attorney general who does not have to recuse himself and he's, he's taken over the Mueller investigation. Because Whitaker is Rosenstein's boss and Whitaker has not recused himself. He is now in charge of oversight of the Mueller investigation. Rosenstein is no longer in charge. And that has them freaking out because they 
were happy as long as Rosenstein was running the show. And they do not like having Whitaker there because they know Whitaker is a Trump supporter and he was a very vocal critic of the Mueller investigation before he was appointed. So I think that I think that was the plan from the whole from the, the get-go. And Q has dropped back in January, but when Trey Gowdy announced he was stepping down from the House Ethics Committee and he was not going to run for re-election, Q asked what role Trey Gowdy might be stepping into. And I thought maybe he'll replace Rosenstein, maybe he'll do this, maybe he'll do that. Trey Gowdy could be our next attorney general. And if that does in if in like say January, when the next session of Congress is installed, Trey Gowdy is out of office. Uh, Trump can leave Whitaker in under the appointments clause. He can leave him in for 210 days. He can Whitaker can stay in as a temporary attorney general. He can actually extend it and he can be in there for 420 days if he wants. But I think Whitaker will come in, crack some heads, uh, unseal a bunch of indictments, lock up a bunch of people, and then uh, turn the keys over to whoever is going to be the next attorney general. If it does end up being Trey Gowdy, that would be a very interesting future proves past that Q told us a year ahead of time that Trey Gowdy would be the next attorney general. Um, I, I, I see, and when I look at all this stuff, I see a high degree of long-term planning hmm. that is just, uh, it boggles my mind. I mean, if you look at things too closely, mm -hmm. if you get bogged down in the small minutia and the details, it can be really confusing. I try to keep flying at the 40,000 foot level and looking at the big picture. Well, I'm glad you are because I think I'm more down in the muck and mire, scratching my head like, <laughs> so what about this? Now, now um, I was going to ask you about the sealed indictments because this is the thing, right? We've been talking about sealed indictments, sealed indictments, and they are there in every state. We've even had uh, at least one person from our ministry uh, that is a lawyer look into the yep. filings. You can go on the pacer.gov website and check it out. You can, anyone can find them. And, and they're there. They are there. I mean, and thousands of them and, and across the different states. And so, so, so it's just like, are these, are these arrests ever coming? But you, you kind of already answered that question by saying, all right, well, if the strategy is the way you're explaining, they weren't going to waste opening them before Sessions re resigned. So that, that kind of answers that question right out the gate. Okay. What about the midterm? Now, in this midterm, the, uh, the fake news media was predicting a blue wave. Yep. In fact, the House of Representatives was an overwhelming in uh, a, a sweep of Democratic wins that I don't think, uh, I, I certainly didn't expect. Now, I, I just, uh, you know, I wanted to get your take on the midterm elections and what this means for Q and all of his posts and the plan, which I'm still trying to figure out what exactly the whole plan is. I, I think it's to take out the deep state. I hope it's to take that's what, cause I want to see the deep state go down, but I'm asking the questions. What can you tell me, Mr. Hayes? I, I did not expect uh, us to lose the house, but in Looking at it, researching, and looking at what Q has said, and looking at what Trump has said, I believe Trump's people knew they were going to lose the House. And when you uh, know that you're going to lose something, you move all of your assets out of that into something else that you're not going to lose, right? You put your eggs in one basket. If you have eggs in two baskets and you know one of those baskets is going to get dumped, remove all your eggs from that one basket, put it in the other basket, and you lose that basket, it doesn't matter. Right? <laughs> that is what happened with the House and the Senate. Okay. I'm in looking back at what, now what Q has said since the midterms and looking at what Trump has said and looking at things that have happened in the House over the last year, it's obvious they were planning on losing the house. 
uh, Trump's people. They knew it was coming. Hmm. Now, here's why I say that. The, the majority of the investigations into corruption were done by House Judiciary, House Intel, and House uh, Oversight, Government Oversight and Reform, uh, chaired by Trey Gowdy, Bob Goodlatte, and Devin Nunez. Those three committees did most of the investigations. Okay. If Trump was planning on keeping the House and moving those investigations forward with um, Jim Jordan, Mark Meadows under Trey Gowdy and Bob Goodlatte and all those people that have been working on this, then why did Goodlatte and Gowdy step down and decide not to run for re-election? They announced they were not running for re-election in January. If you have key people on committees that are doing important investigations, why would the chairs step down? It doesn't make any sense. That tells me they were planning on losing the House and they were planning on moving those investigations into the Senate. Hmm. And Chuck Grassley is in charge of the Senate Judiciary. Senate Judiciary has direct oversight over FBI and DOJ. Who makes direct criminal referrals to the FBI and DOJ? Senate Judiciary under Chuck Grassley. So the House Oversight Ethics Committee, uh, uh, Trey Gowdy's Committee, um, Government and Oversight Reform, uh, Bob Goodlatte's House Judiciary, and Devin Nunez in House Intelligence. They did their investigations for two years. Their investigative findings and everything is being handed over to Chuck Grassley, who is going to make criminal referrals and continue any investigations that need to be on, that need to continue going on. I think Trump's people knew they were going to lose the House, <clears throat> which is why they put all their money in gaining seats in the Senate. So Republicans picked up a bunch of seats in the Senate. They have a stronger majority. Flake is gone. Uh, Bob Corker is gone. Uh, and a few other people are gone who were never Trumpers, who did not. The problem with the Senate was we had a 51 to 49 majority and three or four people in there who were and never Trumpers. So Trump didn't actually have a majority in the Senate. The Senate <clears throat> is responsible for all, approving all cabinet picks, judicial appointments. And the Senate also does criminal referrals to the FBI and DOJ. The Senate is much more important, and Trump knew that. So here is what I think they did. I think Trump made it seem as if he wanted the House really badly, because that's where all the investigations were doing, going on. Trump convinced the Democrats we're going to bury you with our investigations in the House. <clears throat> Therefore, you better try to take the House from us. So the Dems go for it. They put all their money into trying to take the House. What happens is they get control of the House, and then Trump takes all of his investigations and moves them to the Senate. And now Dems have the House. They can't pass any legislation without the Senate. <clears throat> um, they can shut down investigations, but everything's going to be moved over to Senate Judiciary. They lost the ability to impede Trump's uh, court appointments and all of his cabinet picks. I, when, I look, when I look back at this, I see uh, <clears throat> not a scorched earth policy, but I think Trump definitely knew. It's really hard to hold a house in, in, an, in a midterm election as a incumbent president. Uh, I think Obama lost 63 houses in the, in the in, uh, seats in the house. I believe Bill Clinton lost like 57 seats in the house, his first midterm. It's very difficult for an incumbent president to gain seats in the house. Not that Senate is a little bit easier, but because there's only one third of people that are up for the Senate votes every two years. Mm -hmm. So I think Trump's people did their assessment. They knew they were going to lose the House. So they moved everything over to the Senate 
made the Dems think they had to get the House to shut down the investigations. And the Dems were dumb enough to go for it. And now, they've, now they're stuck with the House. And, it, and, you know, they have a majority in the House. The election <laughs> fiasco with the ballots in Florida and Arizona, it is, it's, it's, it's a travesty. But what's happening is there has been electioneering. There has been a ballot um, tampering for a long time. This time it's being exposed. And what people don't know, a lot of people don't know, is that because of the accusations that there was Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election, Mm -hmm. Trump's Homeland Security put the federal election system, made it a part of critical infrastructure for Homeland Security, which allowed them to monitor federal elections in ways they've never done before. So all of the corruption that has come out in this election cycle, Homeland Security has been monitoring it. It's, it's unfortunate that you can't prevent people from committing crimes, but what you can do after you have evidence of their crimes is you can prosecute them. And I think we're going to see <laughs> some people getting prosecuted for election. Uh, a lot of this stuff is felony level, um, criminal activity. And I believe that Homeland Security has been monitoring it all, is taking in all the data. Um, and it's way too early to get angry and upset about the way that it's, it's turned out. We haven't heard the last of this. And I think some of these election races are going to be contested, overturned, and may, in some cases, there may be new elections. Well, it seems like that's the way it's going. There, there is a, apparently a recount in Florida. They were finding ballots in, in, that were never opened or from, that were mailed in. There's all kinds of things that are being exposed, put on the news. I mean, I've known about black box voting for years. Uh, I had a gentleman on just a couple of weeks ago who was suggesting that one of the number one fixes that needs to happen to this nation is uh, election reform, uh, because kind of- that is... The corruption in this election is, I I think Trump's people allowed it to happen to demonstrate to people how much corruption there is so that they, people will push for mandatory voter ID cards and election reform. But you have to let people do stupid things first before you can allow the government to step in and say, hey, you know what, we need to fix this. Well, there needs to be some fixing. Now, I want to ask about this. All right. So putting all the pieces together, um, hmm. what is Q suggesting for the next two years going to 2020? I mean, all right. You still trust Q. Heck yeah. You just have to trust that some of what we get is going to be disinformation, but yep. you still believe there's a plan. Yep. And okay. We had some so, major changes yesterday. All right. All right. Major changes. Oh my Let's gosh. I was looking at the board and I was talking to my wife. I'm like, what the heck is going on? I was astounded. So something major happened yesterday. 11-11, by the way, because 11-11. we're recording Monday, 11-12. So we're talking about Sunday, 11-11. Yep. I, you know, people were I'm sure a lot of people were expecting like there's going to be arrests or there's going to be, I was expecting Trump to come home and, you know, have some good news about Iran that could still happen. Um, A lot of people had expectations about what they think because Q had said 11, 11 was, this was uh, an important marker, right? Didn't say what was going to happen. Didn't say what we could expect, but said 11, 11 is a very important marker. All right. So I was looking at Q drops yesterday morning as Q is posting. And all of a sudden we start getting these drops that say placeholder. Placeholder, Five Eyes, uh, PUB, placeholder, FISA, Pub, placeholder, Acts of Treason and Support Articles, placeholder, Foreign Acts, Pub, placeholder, Supreme Court rulings regarding challenges regarding civil and non-civil prosecution, placeholder, indictments tracking civil, 
placeholder indictments tracking non-civil, right? So Q is dropping all these placeholder things. And as those posts are coming in, everything that now Q posts on two different boards, Q has his own board called Patriots Fight, and he's the only one that can post on that. You can't, no one can comment on Patriots Fight. Then Q will also post on the research board. The research board is where Anons will get on there and they'll comment and ask questions and things. Well, all these posts over the last couple of days were on Patriots Fight. And Patriots Fight, this board was established on May 4th after the board Great Awakening got attacked and taken down. It was attacked by the deep state. It was corrupted. They shut it down. And then Q moved to Patriots Fight on May 4th. All right. When Q moved or opened up Patriots Fight on May 4th, the header image that was posted on there was a cannon with cannon with a cannon fire coming out of it. And the name of the file was Justice. Hmm. And there was a, a directory of uh, different, like, how do I, it was a directory of like four or five different subject lines. And the header for that, the heading title for that was Future Comms. Okay, that was on May 4th. Q has been posting on Patriots Fight since May 4th. On November 9th, so three days ago, on November 9th, Q deleted all the posts off of Patriots Fight that had been posted on there since May. All gone. And then Q started posting new drops on Patriots Fight. <clears throat> there was probably nine or 10 or maybe 11 posts from the 9th to the 11th. And then on the 11th, once again, all the posts got deleted off of Patriots Fight. All right. So starting yesterday morning, <clears throat> we're, we're looking at a new board and there's a new image on there. And the image, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit. The image that Q posted is a gavel, a judge's gavel. And the image file is, name of it is justice. So the only thing on Patriots fight right now is the header image of the gavel, a flag image with the definition of traitor and patriot. And these placeholder images, these, I start, these placeholder posts that talk about prosecution of treasonous people, uh, five eyes, FISA, Supreme Court rulings, challenges to military tribunals, things of that nature. <clears throat> that is the only thing on Patriots fight right now. And to me, if I'm observing this, <laughs> and if I'm believing Q, I'm believing that something major is coming just by all of these placeholder posts that seem to relate to things that we've all been expecting are going to happen. Uh, looking at that sign, something big is about to happen. Um, and, you know, I, I, I get it. People are thinking, well, Trump should have made an announcement on 11-11. Well, okay, if that's your expectation, that's your expectation. But if you're going to have those expectations, just realize you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> I sit back <laughs> I sit back, and I just watch what is happening. It's like in my dreams all the time. I'm just an observer. I'm a fly on the wall. I hardly mm -hmm. ever interact with people in my dreams. I'm a fly on the wall, and I'm watching stuff happen, right? And... In some of my recent dreams, uh, I've seen, I think I've had two or three dreams in the last, I would say, five or six weeks where I'm observing things that Q has been posting about. They're all coming to pass. I'm just watching on a timeline as one thing after another comes to pass that Q has been telling us about. Man. So uh, I'm also getting a lot of dreams from people through private message and email about arrests. Uh, probably not a day goes by that someone doesn't message me about a dream that they had about mass arrests coming. Um, well, you know, the, the, in, and in defense of the whole arrests thing, there were a huge number of arrests, actually, a few weeks ago. I believe it was in California. 
and it was a whole pedophile ring, and I think it was priests. Oh, yeah. Yep. And they were arrested. That's true. We also had an arrest uh, a couple days ago. Not an arrest, an indictment Mm. of the husband of a California congresswoman. Uh, This woman's husband was, he was one of five people indicted for corruption that has to do with a scheme that they set up through public utility companies. The the scheme was, was siphoning money out of all these public utilities that was ostensibly going to be used for some benevolent purpose. And the five people who set this whole thing up, they were using the money for their own personal use. And it was like $9 million that they um, (laughs) stole out of these companies and used for themselves. Five indictments. And one of them was, like I said, the husband of a congresswoman. So I, I think the sealed indictments are coming relatively soon. Uh, I think they're, they're going to be unsealed. Uh, uh, I'm, I got my popcorn ready, baby. <laughs> okay, you got your popcorn ready. See, I had my popcorn. I think the last time that we did a, a show like this, I was saying, I think these are going to come before, because I actually thought they were coming before the midterm. I was wrong. Um, I did not think they would happen before the midterms. Um, well, too much. Trump would burn way too much political capital if okay. he would have allowed all that to happen before the midterms. And look, we didn't even. Here's here's something to think about. Hmm. This Q drop here that talks about challenges, Supreme Court challenges to what looks like um, civil and versus non-civil prosecution. So we know that some of these people are going to be prosecuted in the civil court system by the DOJ. Some of these people are going to be prosecuted in military tribunals, non-civil court systems. Some of those prosecutions are going to be challenged at the Supreme Court level. Do you think it was a coincidence that Lindsey Graham asked Brett Kavanaugh during the confirmation hearing about the law regarding military tribunals the law of war and the difference between civil and military uh, law. He, there was about a five minute discussion on that subject. <clears throat> I think Lindsey Graham was trolling the deep state because he knew it was coming, but he was also helping people understand that Kavanaugh was on board with the idea of military tribunals and military trials of civilian people in certain cases, um, cases of treason, and espionage and things of that nature. So we needed to have Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court because some of these uh, hearings and trials are going to be contested to the Supreme Court level. And if we didn't have Kavanaugh on the bench, they couldn't, they wouldn't be able to get what they needed. So getting Kavanaugh confirmed was, had to happen, I think, before the indictments could be unsealed. There's a whole lot of things that had to be in place and set up before this could happen. Okay. Now, um, so I asked, like, what, what, what can we expect between now and 2020? Because I'm beginning to feel like sealed indictments are like the carrot that you, but you're on the treadmill. And you're like, okay, we get the sealed indictments. You know, you're, you're just looking for it, and, but you never quite get there. Now I'm wondering, okay, well they have, they, you know, the Kavanaugh got through, fair. Um, Sessions has resigned and you just brought up a great point. I didn't even consider that before this conversation. So I think that's actually a brilliant point in favor of, you know, what Q seems to be pointing towards. Are there more pieces to the puzzle that are going to continue to have to go into place from now till 2020 before we can expect, that's kind of what I'm after. I'm like, is this even a first term thing or do we need two terms before we can see the seal of the night? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I think the arrests are coming very soon. Do you? Yeah, I, I think so. Because <clears throat> I'm of the impression that Whitaker is going to be the executioner. Okay. And I think Whitaker is a short timer. He, he can't stay in there for any more than... Uh, for n- normally under the um, Appointments Act, he would be allowed to take that position for up to 210 days, right? So, what, seven months? And they could extend his uh, temporary appointment 
for another 210 days, I don't think they would do that. So I think in the next seven months, we're probably going to see uh, indictments unsealed and arrests. Actually, I think it's going to happen a lot sooner than that. <clears throat> uh, I would say before the holidays, before the Christmas holidays, probably. Um, I think I think there's a good chance we're going to see arrests happen before the next session of Congress is inaugurated in, or take the oath of office on January 3rd. Hmm. I think some of the people who were elected and, and or some of the people who are sitting in Congress now will uh, be indicted before the next session of Congress is seated. That's, that's, that's my, my take right now. I think it's going to happen relatively quickly. Uh, I think, honestly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just saying prophetically, I think a year from now, people are going to be sick of the arrests and indictments, and they're going to want this to be over with. They're going to wake up in the morning and say, God, please let this be over with. I am so fed up with it. I don't want to see another 300 people arrested this week like that we had last week. <clears throat> uh, I honestly think people are going to get tired of it. In other words, you, you are of the persuasion that the swamp still will be drained. Oh, I have no doubt at all. Trump is either going to be assassinated by the swamp or he's going to put every one of those uh, mother scratchers in jail. <laughs> <laughs> wow well you know I, I i mean i'm i'm hoping i'm hoping like i i so want to see this come to pass i, I think you have some really great answers dave to be honest i mean you, you really you know there's so many tough questions that people are asking i came on here I told you before we we're gonna get started i'm just gonna actually ask the honest questions that are in people's heads that have been following you that maybe have been discouraged or, you know, just disoriented by the whole thing. I, I, I think you have put a whole lot of things in context. I didn't expect you to go ahead and say this is disinformation. And, and <laughs> it's kind of said that. And it's like, wow, well, I guess if we put that on the table, you know, and we understand the 40,000 mile altitude perspective, like you said, um, there, there, there's still a lot um, to, to, to hope for like at least that we will see justice coming to pass. I, I And I am so ready to begin to see this justice come to pass. Now, um, are there other thoughts that you wanna point out about Q and, and, and the different things that have transacted over the midterms that you think need to be put into this po program? Are there other things I want to point out about Q? That's a good question. Um, uh, you know, at the risk of sounding corny, okay. the whole um, Q operation is designed in such a way that, well, someone said this, and it's one of the anons on the board and I can't take credit for it. But they said, it's really interesting how right before the midterms, Trump began pointing out a lot more Q people in the, at the rallies. He was doing air cues or he's doing a circle and he's making a little tail and he was pointing out people holding up cues and stuff. And there was a lot more confirmations the last week, right before the midterms especially, and this Anon said, you know, do you think it was a coincidence that Trump was intentionally signaling to people the validity of Q right before the midterms? He says, I think Trump knew that when Sessions left, when they lost the House, people would lose faith, become doubters, get concerned, maybe Q is a LARP. So Trump gave us some good, solid confirmations before the midterms because he knew it was coming. He knew people would not understand, a lot of people would not understand what was happening with the plan. Oh, is this part of the plan? We didn't hear this part of the plan. Nice. Well, the, the problem that most people have with the plan is they think that they're supposed to understand all the details of the plan. That they think that 
compute has given us all the information about the plan. And if something happens that we don't think is part of the plan, then we need to panic and freak out and decide Q is a LARP. Well, Q never said understand the plan. Q said trust the plan. What does trusting the plan mean? It means, <laughs> it means trusting that Trump is a little smarter than these people. It means trusting that Trump is surrounded by people who are protecting him, that he's got some uh, military intelligence and strategies and tactics that are being employed to trap these stupid, corrupt, deep state actors in their own crimes, that he is putting the right people in place in FBI and DOJ to prosecute them. That's the plan. The plan is just believe that Trump has the right people surrounding him and he's working his own plan and it'll all be okay. Um, that's when I go to bed at night, I just think, you know what? Trump's got this figured out. He's using uh, Sun Tzu <laughs> 3D chess moves. He's 10 steps ahead of everybody. He's got the NSA. They're giving him everybody's private communications. He knows days ahead of time before we do what is going on and, and what needs to happen. So, you know, trusting the plan is not knowing every detail of the plan. It is, it, it's like what your walk with God. Does God tell you every little detail of your life days ahead of time before it's all going to happen? No. You wake up in the morning, you're walking with God, you hear his voice, you try to understand what he's saying through various people, through various situations. You do your best to, to walk with God in a daily walk. It's not having everything mapped out ahead of time. And that's, that's how it is with Q and the president. It's, uh, you're not going to know all the details ahead of time. You just have to go day by day and, and keep in prayer. You know, prayer is the well, big thing. Well, that, well, amen on that, you know, and one of the, we, we still have a prayer on our website called the Trump prayer, which is a prayer that I wrote. And I felt that God had put on my heart, you know, right after he got elected, you know, to write this prayer of spiritual defense for Donald Trump. I, I, I am still convinced that Trump getting elected was part of God's plan for this nation. And it was a complete sliding of the deep state. I, I think it was a curveball. Um, I think that he needs our prayers big time. <laughs> now, I, I just want to ask you this question, because I think it's a very appropriate question to ask um, at, at a conclusion of an interview like this. How are you praying for our president? Protection. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know he's being attacked. Mm -hmm. We know that there are curses being spoken against him. We know that there are assassination attempts that are being planned. I think the reason why he didn't go to that cemetery with everybody else yesterday was, uh, I think the Secret Service got a heads up that there was a potential assassination threat and they said, you're not going, you're staying here. I mean, a big deal was made about it, but I think the Secret Service has, has the final call on all that and I suspect uh, look, we know that there was a plot to assassinate Macron. I mean, that's in the headlines. Um, I suspect the Secret Service knew, and I, and I think there is just this ongoing attempt. The closer we get to these indictments being unsealed and the arrests happening, the more Trump is in danger of assassination. Yes. And, uh, and they certainly have tried. Uh, he's got to have his head in a swivel, the Secret Service and the security details are doing everything they can to keep him safe. I just keep praying for protection for him mm -hmm. that he can make it through this without taking a bullet. Well, folks, um, I think that, that that's absolutely valid. Uh, thank you so much, Dave. Thank, thank you for all of your answers. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your insight, your research. Um, and uh, I'll tell you what, every time I get on here with you, I'm educated. I'm having questions answered that I didn't expect to have answered. Um, I, <laughs> I'm always remark. I, I think it's remarkable how you don't get stumped on some of these questions that people are asking. 
uh, but you really do do your research and you know we're all praying for justice and one thing we can all agree on look it's time for the deep state to go down and i believe that there is there is a reality in which that transacts and um, so i just want to encourage everyone that's listening to this program pray for it and um yep. folks uh, keep the president in prayer keep, keep president you and the prayer. team in prayer keep dan in prayer keep me in prayer keep everybody in prayer <laughs> amen yes because we need it too brother <laughs> <laughs> We did it too. All right, folks. Well, that's it for this week on Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. You can find Dave Hayes at PrayMedic.com. And do you have any other websites that you want to No. Uh, my YouTube channel Which is you're probably watching. troubles with uh, Google. They put a strike, uh, a hate speech strike on my channel. And I'm no longer posting Q videos there because I don't want to risk getting my channel permanently banned. So I'm not posting on YouTube right now. Uh, I am uploading everything to Vimeo and it's all hosted on my website, prayingmedic.com. Uh, my videos and podcasts are also on Podbean and iTunes. And I've got a number of other, you know, BitChute and uh, BitTube and other places where backup uh, videos are available. Uh, I have some other, I have redundant backups because I have seen this stuff coming, the attacks coming, uh, you know, it's possible I could get completely deplatformed like Alex Jones. Um, so I'm, you know, my website is essentially Helms Deep. Uh, it's, the, it's the fallback position on my website, prayingminute.com. Everything will always be available there if I get my accounts yanked at other places. Goodness gracious. And they are targeting people uh, that are trying to put out truth. And so, well, this is going to be on our channel. <laughs> And um, folks, Dave Hayes, until next time, God bless and Godspeed. You've been listening to Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. If you would like to connect with us at Bride Ministries or to support what we are doing financially, visit us at www.bridemovement.com.